to, to summarize whatever we've learned so far, uh, because we mainly focus on cities, or we try at least within this podcast, um, you now live in Biarritz. Let's imagine that you're the mayor of Biarritz uh, and degrowth with your degrowth stick. What, what would be some of the steps or how would you translate your knowledge into some actions or into some, let's say, initiatives that you, you would rally citizens and companies and, and people within Biarritz? Economic growth, the way I conceptualize it, is like an engine that is self-amplifying. So for me, degrowth is about you know stopping the engine. It's an engine of production, an engine of consumption. They are both like self-amplificating. So as the mayor of Biarritz, I would just ban advertising in the street, you know, like it's been done in Grenoble and, and, and several other th cities. I would also, you know, constrain um, not only advertise, public advertising, but also as much as I can uh, online advertising. And uh, let's say every single pressure to consume having to do with publicity or planned obsolescence should become, you know, banned or heavily taxed or whatever tools. So here we can shrink the engine of consumption. To do this as well, I would want to rethink consumption through the lens of well-being, being like, okay, I'm the mayor of Biarritz. How can the people of Biarritz be happy in their daily lives without having to consume going to the mall? And then you realize that actually, you know, keeping a forest uh, in, in good shape and public park and you know, uh, developing uh, the infrastructure around surfing so that it's available to and affordable for people to do. Uh, same thing with, so giving people option to find ways of, of entertaining themselves, meeting, relating to each other without having to rely on consuming every time more commodities. Here we're constraining consumption. Then I'll go hard on production too. I'll be like starting by doing democratic inventories uh, in the city of the type of activities we want, the type of activities we don't want. So that's like local industrial policy. I, I'm a surfer, I surf every day. Uh, you can, you know, the pollution is there. We have the harbor of Bayonne uh, issues relating to overfishing and, you know, mass transport of good. The, the water is very often polluted. Uh, so here, it, it's uh, it's an experience of, of in a city that is just close to the ocean, you have to have this relation to nature. So now I would want to have, bring that discussion. Okay, we are a coastal city and we also, we are a city that is producing things to, you know, uh, goods and services that we need to, to, to satisfy our needs. How do these two cohabit? And there are certain things that actually we can identify as being like low well-being, high, uh, ecologically intensive product that we could phase out. So I, I would like, yeah, these are the type of things. And then to do this, it starts with work time reduction because how can you have these discussions? How can you mobilize people into organizing alternative forms of economy if they're just too busy uh, working uh, in, in, in a, for a company, most of the time working, producing things that don't directly consume or don't have a lot of fun uh, producing. So this is um, overall, I think, and to, to develop a bit more the link with cities, when we're thinking of democratizing the economy, it necessarily mean relocalizing production and consumption. Necessarily, because if you want to have a democratic forum where you know producers and consumers and all the people that are kind of bearing the consequences of that production and consumption, if they can all be in the same room, then you minimize the risk of exploitation because at some point I'm gonna be like, dude, listen, I'm surfing every day and you cleaning your boat of oil just straight on my spot is just not cool. <laughs> but if the boat is cleaning you know, their oil like in a faraway country we never see and care, it, it makes it way easier for us not to care about. So re relocalizing and productive activities is a way of somehow bringing them back within the realm of democracy. And there are many other tools to do this. Local currencies is a great way because that also repoliticize money in the sense of today money is the bank have monopoly in creating and destroying it. 
But with local currencies, it actually be, we can have local monetary policy where we decide somehow to use the money to invest into new sectors, to create new money, to boost or stimulate certain activities, like with time banks, uh, that we're not finding any uh, finance and funds under a, a normal capitalist economy. So here's a few. Uh, ch changes that probably uh, make everyone realize I would uh, do a terrible job at being the mayor of Biarritz. <laughs> so this is not an official application, but if the mayor of Biarritz uh, does not want to hear my recommendation, I'll be more than happy to look into it. 